Hello everyone, welcome to another QuickBooks training moment with Steiner Business Solutions. My name is Doug. Today we're going to be going over a process for fixing a very common problem that I get uh, presented with when I'm doing some training. A lot of times I get customers come in and tell me, you know, I've got this customer invoice that's still outstanding in my system and I know they've paid it and I know I put it in the system and I reconciled my bank statement so the payment must have been recorded but it's still showing the customer's invoice being outstanding what what do I do so this is what we're gonna look at as an example we'll go right into the customer center um, we're gonna use this Stephen Locke re-invoice as an example he's got a balance of 8728 that is this invoice right here and again the client says look I, I know they paid it I recorded it in the system why is it still showing it out as outstanding so you maybe even gone done a little bit more research, gone into your check register and said, okay, here it is. Here's the payment right here. I knew I recorded it. Here's the payment, 8728. So if we open this up, edit the deposit, we can open up, see, all right, yeah, you booked it to Stephen Lockery, uh, and it was for 8728 on, on December 15th. Well, what you did though is you applied it to a revenue account. And by booking it to a revenue account this way, instead of going through the receive payment screen, you've booked it to revenue and it never gets associated with that open invoice. So it doesn't show that invoice as being paid. And not only that, not only is the invoice still outstanding, but now you've actually double booked your revenue. Because here you're booking it to a revenue account, you're booking it to this labor installation account, but you also booked it to revenue when you recorded the customer's invoice. So you're actually showing that revenue twice on your books which means in the end you will get taxed on it twice as well. Your, your revenue is overstated. So this is what we're going to do to fix it. We'll, we'll go ahead and close this deposit right now. We're going to have to fix this, but we'll come back to it. Let's go back to the customer center. We'll go to that invoice that's still outstanding in the system, but you know has been paid. We'll open the invoice, and at the top we can click hit receive payment. This is what you should be doing is hit receive payment, or you should be going through customer menu and going to receive payment. We click this, it's going to bring up that customer. If it's not there, you, you fill in the customer's name here from the drop down. Um, and it'll bring up any open invoices for that customer. It's already applied the 8728. This is where you put the amount that you're going to put in, the date you receive the payment, and the reference number will be the check number. In this case, the check number was 1300. You can see it's automatically applied it to uh, the outstanding invoice, but you could change the amount applied if you needed to. So once this is all filled out, hit save and close, now you can see this invoice is showing as being paid. If we go back to the customer screen, here's the invoice, and here's the payment. And the customer no longer has a balance due. So that part's right, but we're only halfway done. We recorded the payment, now the customer count is correct, but the deposit side of it is still not correct. So let's go back to the deposit itself, open that deposit, and then the way it's supposed to work, if you've received payments against customer invoices, you don't put it on a line here and book it to the revenue account. You have to go into the payment window that shows everything that's sitting in undeposited funds. And there's that payment that we just recorded from Stephen Lockery. We check that, hit OK, and it pulls it onto the deposit here, the deposit slip. Now we have it on there twice. We have the new, the new payment that we just recorded and the old way that it was recorded. So we're going to delete the old way. The old version of the payment delete this line now it's just the new one you can see it's coming from undeposited funds so it's not hitting the income account a second time the customer payment has been recorded properly so it, the customer's account is showing it the right way and now the deposit is correct we hit save and close and now it's recorded the deposit is still the same way it is we didn't change that but the customer uh, customer's account is correct and the great thing about this, this solution, the way of fixing this this way, is if you did already reconcile that bank account, this is not going to upset that. You know, sometimes when you delete uh, a transaction after it's already been reconciled in the bank statement, if you delete anything uh, and then re-enter it maybe, um, you, have to, you have to fix that in the reconciliation screen. So by doing this, we never actually deleted a payment and we never actually... Uh, or we didn't delete the deposit and we didn't actually change the amount of it either so we didn't disrupt the reconciliation so that's how you fix uh, a customer payment that was recorded incorrectly hopefully this was helpful to you um, definitely check out 
our YouTube page and all the other videos we have. I have a more in-depth video on how to record customer payments correctly. Um, there's lots of other videos. Click the, the link on the screen to subscribe to our page and you'll be the first one to be notified every time I put out a new video. Um, check us out. Check out our website at SteinerBusinessSolutions.com. We do all kinds of training and other things. Um, we can do it one-on-one -on -one if you're nearby or uh, we can uh, do it remotely as well. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, all the uh, social media places. Anything else I've forgotten. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Have a great day.